let us quickly go through some of the discussion that is left in our design of over reinforced sorry design of doubly reinforced beam in our previous lecture we looked up to the analysis of over reinforced beam and determination of the neutral axis depth today we will look at the remaining two topics on limiting moment of resistance and design of doubly reinforced beam and the next two or three video lectures will be our tutorial classes on the analysis and design of doubly reinforced beams and after the completion of tutorial classes we will start with flanged beams in which we will discuss about the t beams and l beams so today first let us look at the limiting moment of resistance and compression steel first we have a formula given here which gives us the limiting moment of resistance for the condition in which the depth of neutral axis is equal to the limiting depth that is xu is equal to xu limiting and the limiting moment of resistance is calculated using this formula here so instead of xu we have replaced xu with xu limiting in this formula so here we know that this fsc is the stress in concrete at the level of centroid of compression reinforcement and this value of fsc is dependent upon the grade of steel and the ratio of d dash by d so d dash by d and grade of steel so d dash means it is the distance from the extreme compression fiber to the centroid of compression reinforcement as we discussed in our previous classes if this is the level of compression reinforcement then the distance of its centroid from the extreme compression fiber this is the value of d dash so the value of efsc is dependent upon the ratio d dash by t and the grade of steel and you can see a table on your screen here which gives us different values of fsc for different values of d dash by d So the value of d dash by d starts from 0.04, and corresponding to this value, for three different grades of steel, we are given with the value of FSC. So I'd like to correct uh, a mistake here. Previously, I said that this is the stress in our concrete at the level of compression reinforcement. This is not the stress level in concrete. Rather, this is the stress in our steel reinforcement in compression zone that is our compression reinforcement so fsc is the stress in our compression reinforcement and its value is given in this table for different values of d dash by t and for different grades of steel here so this value i think is also given in sp16 and when we when we are in our one of our tutorial classes when we are discussing the design and analysis of doubly reinforced beams we will look at the tables relating to this value of fsc given in sp16 and we will learn how to design based on those tables also so the formula gave us the limiting moment of resistance now what is the value of limiting moment of compression steel so the pc limiting is given by this formula here so how do we get this formula let me tell in very short here let us say that the percentage of tensile reinforcement has two components one is the value of pt limiting and another is pt minus pt limiting so as we discussed now the value of pt in our doubly reinforced beam will be greater than that of a singly reinforced beam so this pt or this total amount of tension reinforcement will have two values one is the pt limiting that is the maximum amount of tensile reinforcement for a balanced singly reinforced beam and another part is the remaining steel which is pt minus pt limiting so the use of this pt limiting is that the tensile force due to this steel present in our singly reinforced balanced beam is equalized or balanced by the compressive force in concrete which is given by 
f c k b x u max you remember in our previous lecture we divided our doubly reinforced beams into two parts where first we had a balanced singly reinforced beam and then we had a steel beam here steel beam means we have here steel reinforcement in both tension and compression zone but we do not have any concrete here so this pt limiting is the amount of steel present in this first section here the balanced under the, the balanced singly reinforced beam and this pt limiting the tensile force developed in this pt limiting is used to balance the compressive force in concrete given by this formula now what happens is the tensile force due to the remaining steel which is pt minus pt limiting this is balanced by the compressive force in this compressive steel alone in our first case the tensile force was balanced by the compressive force of this concrete whereas in our second case the tensile force due to the remaining steel which is pt minus pt limiting is balanced by the compressive force in this compression reinforcement only so considering the equilibrium of this second part our tensile force due to pt minus pt limiting is given as 0.87 fy into ast and that ast can be replaced by pt minus pt limiting by 100 into bd so this is the tensile force due to the remaining steel which is balanced by the compressive force in our compression reinforcement and that is given as fsc minus 0.447 fck now we have pc limiting over 100 into bd and this pc limiting is the maximum value or limiting value of compression reinforcement rearranging this equation in terms of pc limiting you will get this formula here so if the compression reinforcement actually provided that is pc provided in a beam section exceeds pc limiting that means if pc is greater than pc limiting then xu will be less than xu max and the beam is under reinforced so what happens is that if the compression reinforcement which is actually provided in our beam is greater than the value of pc limiting then the depth of the neutral axis will be less than the limiting value of neutral axis since we have greater amount of compression reinforcement in our compression zone then the compressive force that is to be resisted by this concrete at the compression zone becomes less so the area of concrete required when it becomes less that means this neutral axis will shift to the upward direction for example it may be here so this will be our yaxu value and the value of yaxu will be less than yaxu max when pc is greater than pc limiting and in this case we will have a under reinforced beam but when we have the value of pc less than the value of pc limiting the value of yaxu will be greater than yaxu max and we will have a over reinforced beam so this concept seems to be the just opposite of singly reinforced beam in singly reinforced beams when we had the percentage of tensile reinforcement less than the value of the limiting tensile reinforcement then we had an under reinforced section but in this case if the percentage of compression reinforcement is less than the value of limiting of value of compression reinforcement then we will have a over reinforced beam so the case is just the opposite and finally the limiting moment of resistance for the balanced section as we discussed in our first slide today that can be replaced and that equation can be expressed in terms of the limiting value of tensile reinforcement pt limiting in this way so you can use this formula also to calculate the value of limiting moment of resistance so after discussing this finally let us discuss some design steps regarding the design of doubly reinforced rectangular beam the diagram on the right hand side is the diagram that we have been discussing in this lecture also and in the previous lecture also where our doubly reinforced beam has been divided or composed of two parts one is the remember one is the balanced 
strongly reinforced beam and another is the steel beam. We call this steel beam because we only have steel here and we do not have the concrete present. So if the limiting moment of resistance of this balanced singly reinforced beam is Yn1 and the moment capacity of this steel beam is represented as Yn2, then the nominal moment capacity of this doubly reinforced beam as a whole is represented as Yn1 plus Yn2. To find Yn1 here, we have a table shown here. Let us say this Mn limiting is equal to Yn1. This Yn1 is dependent upon the grade of steel that we are using. So we have already derived these formulas. To determine Yn1, if we are using mild steel, then the value of limiting moment is 0.149 FCK BD square for FE415. This factor is changed to 0.138 and for the FE500 grade steel, the factor becomes 0.133. Corresponding to this, we can determine the value of the limiting amount of tensile reinforcement using these formulas. Then, the moment capacity of this steel beam, Mn2 is given as Mn minus Mn1. And corresponding to this value of Mn2, we can then derive the value of the compression reinforcement area and also the value of AS2. So let's look at the design steps now. Okay, the value of Mn2 is given as FSC minus FCC ASC into D minus D dash. This is the moment capacity of the steel beam. That means the beam with steel reinforcement but no concrete. And this is given by this formula. We have already discussed about this formula also. FSC is the stress in compression reinforcement and FCC is the stress in concrete at the level of compression reinforcement. The value of FCC is very small as compared to FSC so for all practical purposes the value of FCC or this FCC term can be ignored here. So finally Mn2 can be written as Mu minus Mn limiting as we saw this formula in our previous slide. Mn limiting is Mn1 plus Mn2 and that is given as now since there is no FCC this becomes FSC ASC D minus D dash. And similarly the total area of tensile reinforcement will be added AST1 plus AST2. AST1 we can derive from the formulas that we derived for singly reinforced beam and AST2 is given as ASC into FSC over 0.87 FY. Again this comes from our equilibrium of tensile and compressive forces. The tensile force in our steel beam becomes 0.87 FY into AST2. That means the stress in steel into the area of steel, whereas the compressive force is equal to the area of compression steel into the stress of compression steel. So rearranging this equation, we get AST2 as ASC into FSC over 0.87 FY. Now finally, let's look at the design steps. We know that we have to adopt doubly reinforced beam because the depth of our beam cannot be increased because of certain restrictions such as architectural requirements. So in that case, if you are given a certain depth of beam, assume a reasonable breadth of the beam first and then calculate the limiting moment of resistance of that section considering the beam is singly reinforced. So first calculate the limiting moment of resistance for a singly reinforced section. Now based on the type of load that is present on our beam, we can calculate the ultimate bending moment or the factored applied moment that is coming onto our beam there. And we have the value of Yn limiting from our step number one. So if this limiting moment of resistance of our beam considering a singly reinforced section is greater than the applied moment, then our singly reinforced section is adequate to resist all of this externally applied moment. But if our externally applied moment is greater than the value of our limiting moment of resistance of a singly reinforced section, then in that case, our beam has to be designed as doubly reinforced. Only in that case. 
so after determining or after knowing that we have to design the doubly reinforced beam now let us determine the value of ast1 ast1 is given by this formula here mn limiting which we calculated from our first step divided by 0.87 fy d minus 0.416 xy limiting in the next step now calculate the additional moment to be resisted by the beam that is mu2 is given by mu minus mn limiting as we discussed before now this mu2 this moment has to be resisted by the internal couple produced by the additional tensile stress and the compressive steel so ast1 we got by assuming first that our beam is singly reinforced and balanced section ast1 now to calculate ast2 we have to again use the equation of equilibrium where the compressive forces in our compression reinforcement here the compressive forces in our compression reinforcement is balanced by the tensile forces in our tension reinforcement so these two forces generates a couple and that couple is produced by the additional tensile steel ast2 and the compressive steel asc compute ast2 and asc using the following equations we have equations here we have already discussed about these equations also and finally after calculating ast2 from step 5 and ast1 from step 4 sorry step 3 ast1 here and ast2 is here calculate the total tensile steel which is given is ast1 for plus ast2 finally check if the provided pc pc can be calculated as this is the percentage of compression reinforcement asc which we calculated from here over bd in 200 and also then calculate the value of pc limiting with our formula that we discussed in this uh, current lecture in previous slides check if the provided pc is greater than the pc limiting to ensure that the beam is under reinforced if pc is less than pc limiting then our beam becomes over reinforced then we have to revise the reinforcement so once we do this we can perform other checks regarding shear deflection and maximum crack width so this is about the design of doubly reinforced rectangular section after the end of this lecture we will have two to three tutorial classes and after the completion of those tutorial classes we will begin with the analysis and design of flanged beams so this brings us to the end of our today's class we'll meet again soon in our next video thank you